Hi, welcome. I thought I'd try to do another tutorial, and this one's about how to do uh, import your stop motion animation pictures into Shotcut and Blender. I'm going to show you two ways to do it in Shotcut. So, for example, you had a bunch of um, pictures you did for stop motion, either you made it in one place or another, so, and you want to import them. So, if you look for the tutorials on YouTube, it says you put all your pictures in a folder, drag in the first photo that works. So the duration is set to 4 seconds um, and it's one frame per picture and you click on image sequence and it should automatically um, make this blue bar which means it's actually imported. Then you can take that and drop it to your video track and there you have it right you push play and it's playing. Now don't worry about the, the ugly animation in the background that's from something else. And okay well that worked perfectly and there's actually nothing in my playlist of course right because I didn't drop it in the playlist itself so option two is when that didn't work because actually it didn't work on my other computer um, you can add all of the images so if you take them and just add them into your playlist so drop them in there they'll add I sped this up about by six times here took a while um, you have all your images and then if you drop them in, and this took even longer, it's now sped up 10 times, but it works. You get all your images in there. And what you know, though, is the default was 4 seconds. It's 1, through 3, 4, yeah, four, 4 seconds, right? It's a bit too long, so each one is 4 seconds. Uh, if we go to the properties there, we can see that. So what I decided to do is just change that to actually one, one frame, uh, right? So set that as a default, click set default then went in, select them all, drop them in again wait a while and now you see that the actual duration is going to be one one frame so after they're imported you actually have them all there remove that, that space you can play it, it's a bit a bit cumbersome in the pre preview and shortcut but it works and then you just have to export them. That's what I did to see it. So if you zoom in, the advantage here is actually you have access to all of the frames. For example, that one, one black frame for whatever reason, it's right there. So I can select it and delete it. There we go. Just select it and delete it. And then it's gone, right? Um, export it. Here I just do YouTube default here, go ahead and export that. And we have a look at it um, to my video folder. I'll let it work there. Oh, it doesn't take too long not for this thing. There are only 192 frames or 91. So export. And when open it up, it's almost done. Okay. So then we go ahead and, and open it up. So now I did my bouncing balls. I actually made it in Blender originally, um, but I exported it from there for this tutorial. All right, so that, that works. Now there's option three, you actually can do this in Blender too. And to do that, you want to use the, the video editor. So you go over here, go to video editing. Now there is a file browser as well as some scene properties and then you have your, your tracks at the bottom. So you might be tempted to say, I'll just drag and drop them, but actually that's not how it works um, in Blender. Now for I'll just show you some options there, we say that it's 24 frames per second. Um, and where the video is supposed to go out, we're going to change it not to PNG but to actually a video format. And the encoding is right under here in the the nested tab there and um, here we have there. so you're going to go add image sequence add the sequences and now you you select them all like we did in the other ones you go ahead and select select them all let's go to the bottom here and the start frame and end frame is the actual frames if it goes over it's just going to fill up uh, more frames by itself and then it is, it's already in there. We can push then play real quick. And you can see it's already already working. It's a lot, lot faster. This is in real time than, than it was in Shotcut. <clears throat> Shotcut was great, but this is 
it happens to be faster. Um, now, the other thing is that the background is gray, even though it's white, right? So if you checked in near the settings, uh, um, I couldn't find anything here that would adjust it. Um, interesting is in the time, you see that the time it lists the number of frames, which is really nice, uh, where it starts and stops. But it turns out um, that and we have 192 um, images. And let's see, the source is then here where the actual images are coming from. You can actually click on that and change the data files, which I find fairly convenient. But we still have this gray problem. And how do we get rid of that? If we render the animation, we'd see, yeah, it's definitely gray. Right? The original one was white, not gray. And where could it be? Well, it turns out it's in the color management and the layout. So we go layout, and you go over here to the, I guess it's a camera, a scene. And where was it? Where is it? It is at the very, 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 very bottom of, this is Blender, I think, 2.92 or so. And um, there, we want to change it to standard. All right, once that's done, you have then your white background once again. Uh, go ahead and render that out. And we see that actually it is indeed white. Still wondering why the original export kind of screwed up some of the frames, even though the original direct export from, from Blender was fine. But that doesn't really matter right now. Good. Um, and I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, what's going on? Oh, yeah, we're still rendering frames. And that was because I... Um, not that I had said it, right? We said there was only 191 images here. The in frame is 191. So we figured it'd stop. And also about a second eight or so like Shotcut had done. But that was because I had actually said it a little bit longer. Um, so uh, the original default when you open up with the default in Blender is 250 frames. Go out to the layout settings and I decided just to do it here to change where it starts and stops. So we just match it right here, 191 frames. And there you go. Uh, now I don't have to worry about that blank frames being rendered out at the very end. There was something here. There is a right menu when you click on it. And you could add modifiers and do some other um, fun things to it. Um, it's not a tutorial about that, but I'll just point it out. And there we go. Add a blender back into Blender through Shotcut and Blender again.